started the timer. <clears throat> so yeah, this is like um, something which I would like to um, push as, a, as, a, as a, for the beginning, just to like uh, have the general kind of uh, evidence and uh, overview that um, the increasing privatization of space, public services, and networks is responsible for the transition of digital networks from public-private binary into the open close. Uh, popular assumption that computers are either empowering and emancipatory or a surveillance machine of control. I think it should be addressed by, by a little bit more uh, uh, analysis. I, I must say also say that I must also say that uh, I'm sad that we really cannot talk about the pub public and private, and that we are now at that stage where we actually can choose from open and close. Uh, and uh, maybe if we like solve that one, maybe we can. Maybe one day we will be able to, to go further and, and, and at least again talk about the uh, public-private binary. <coughs> so this is part of my research, which I uh, studied uh, at Tianwan uh, um, in, in in Maastricht. Um, I, I'm, I'm coming from Zagreb, from Multimedia Institute. So it's like uh, Tianwan Ike was like uh, the result of, of my. Uh, collaboration with my uh, peers in, in, in Zagreb for the last 10 or 12 years. So <clears throat> uh, I analyzed the business strategies, visions, and corporate missions of Google, Facebook, Amazon, and eBay. And I tried to consider the way these firms design their technical infrastructures, how they create rules governing the user's access to data and the services, and how they appropriate the counterculture values and identities, especially the, the hackers culture. That's, that's where I uh, come from also. <clears throat> so uh, I'm also trying to put it in, in some co historical context, uh, because there, there, there were not networks, and they are still here before the, the big network of today, uh, internet. So, so part of my research is also to try to see uh, uh, what, what would be the, the, the similarities and differences in between um, infra network infrastructures uh, like um, electric power distribution, for example, the transportation, uh, telephone, uh, and also like one very important uh, uh, kind of um, moment which happened with, uh, with the trade when the uh, physical space of shops got abstracted into the catalog. And that happened uh, uh, because of the because of the railroads, because of the trains. So I think that we can learn also from 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 these examples from the past. <clears throat> so why I I, I I took like these like four? There were like few other candidates, but they were also declining in their power, like um, like Yahoo, for example. So <clears throat> I, I took uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and eBay because they were founded as internet-only businesses. So in a way that the digital natives of the, of the business world, uh, network infrastructures they build are uh, offered usually for free as, as, as public services, it looks like that. It's governed by their citizens and they promise typically, uh, and, and that promise typically was like a, a promise from, from the governments. Uh, so their huge growth has demonstrated the strength of the network paradigm. And many hope that digital networks would eliminate intermediaries, uh, the middlemen, completely. But what we are witnessing is that, uh, that although many middlemen disappeared and disappearing and it will disappear, the few who remained, and these are the who, uh, few who remained, found their position uh, stronger than, uh, uh, than before. And that's, that's one of the very important uh, 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 things when we think about the networks and the network economy and the, the effects of the networks. Uh, so it's much more obvious uh, that the way how we allocate resources, resources today, it leads to the monopolies. So it, it's just on the networks, it becomes more obvious than like uh, in the rest of the capitalism. <clears throat> so uh, what, what do they do? So they digitize intellectual heritage, like a Google Books Library project. They digitize Earth, Google Earth. They digitize as part of that project, Moon and Oceans. Um, eBay, for example, provide a glo global trading platform where practically anyone can trade practically with, uh, uh, can trade practically anything with anyone else. Um, 
they this is like quite uh, um, it's it's small but it's it's very like a significant uh, what it can be done so amazon's mechanical turk facilitate the online supply of workers intellectual labor to businesses through transient task based limited time relation uh, uh, limited time relationship without any direct communication so if you have a task it will be like a um, uh, split into many small that's amazon uh, mechanical turk and then you can just offer it to the crowds and these small tasks will be done, done by a volunteer so people who will do uh, a very uh, it's a very cheap labor so in a sense it's it's a direction uh, where uh, the same kind of optimizations uh, uh, and direction which we can expect that it will happen to the uh, labor market for example ibm uh, uh, that was like later i i i i wrote this slide they they will start with the experiment where they will not have any like a contract uh, uh, i mean like a fully employed uh, uh, people but it will be just like a, some kind of um, a, a job a market of jobs people will apply uh, and bid so it will be like a, a big auction for ibm and that's that's how they will outsource the managing uh, allocation of resources and managing the workers and in many ways uh, it can lead to the to the huge uh, huge disaster i would say even it seems like a, a nice up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, uh, optimization through ab abstraction um, so they also use a lot that real time auction so it's uh, it's it's used for the computer clouds which amazon uh, runs uh, for the to maximize uh, capacity utilization uh, and then there is a huge, uh, I will talk a little bit more uh, uh, later about the Google AdWords. So whenever you go to the Google, like a searching, all of these ads are result of uh, every time when you do that, uh, of a huge auction where they pick up the one which won that auction and that's how they will, uh, how they will like uh, place these results. So whenever you do the search, in the background, uh, Google will do the uh, auction kind of uh, a bidding, and that's how they will uh, show uh, show you their ads. <clears throat> um, they know who who is friend with whom. Uh, they know like uh, your like uh, uh, preferences as a reader or as, as as a buyer like Amazon. They will recommend you what other people bought when you bought some some pro products or something like that. And also they know about your reliability on the market. For example, on eBay like how reliable buyer or how reliable seller you are. So in that sense, uh, I call that they are the ruling class of a digital world. These are the reasons why I call them like that. So why Google? I will, I will focus today on Google. <clears throat> so why Google? Because they, they got in a, in a very specific position where they adapted to, uh, to many uh, things which other businesses didn't. For example, they don't need to protect their uh, intellectual property because they are middlemen and also everything what they do, they can just uh, close, they can uh, protect by keeping that on their servers. There is also a lot of software which they push, but their core business is protected by that, what we call uh, a, a business model. But being successful in that, they got into the, the scale of, the, of, the, of their like, uh, uh, activity, of their existence in that sense, such a, like, a huge, they many times they resonate with the public interest uh, and and we are witnessing that they are very like the, the government in that sense uh, the governments didn't uh, uh, governments don't really uh, do that anymore so they don't really behave in the um, in the direction of the of the public interest but mostly they try to be the middleman of the negotiations of like people and corporations. And uh, in the last couple of decades, I would say that corporations were much better um, uh, and stronger actors than the public. And in that sense, Google is also one of these actors. And what is very uh, interesting to me is that when it resonates with, with, uh, with my position, where I'm not a corporation and uh, where, I, where I try uh, to think of the public interest. So I will just uh, tell you a couple of examples how that happened and why I, I, I see that as, as quite interesting. So they, they do a lot, of, um, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, a lot of production of software, like a free software, open source. I think that in 2012, 
I, I, I don't want to like explain that. If you don't know, please go to the Wikipedia. You should really get to the get up to, up to date with what's free software and open source is. So they did like a Google Wave at one moment, but it failed. But it was a it, it was a big investment from their from their side. So at least they did that. Uh, they tried to like offer something which is open standard, which is free software, which is federated. It's it's pretty much resonates with many of the of of, of the dreams of uh, people who think of the networks as some kind of emancipatory uh, 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 platforms. Android OS is uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, a lot of free software there, not completely with their apps. The the development process is pretty closed, but at the end of their release cycle. It is actually a software where they cannot control if you, if you can download it and just continue with the development. If you think that you are big enough to compete with the Google development, you can do that. That's, that's the gesture which they did. I think it's, it's quite, in that sense, interesting. Chrome, uh, Chromium, uh, it's the name of the open source uh, part of the, of the Chrome. Uh, also, like many others, they also financially support many projects like uh, Firefox or Ubuntu uh, before. I'm not sure, not anymore. Um, uh, and also like uh, a lot of uh, attempts to make a free software through Google Summer of Code. But the, the case of the uh, uh, 700 megahertz band in the regulation of the uh, radio frequency spectrum is a very interesting uh, uh, one. So, <clears throat> um, so te television was also changing through time. Um, okay, I have enough time. Um, and uh, it became digital you now probably like run a digital TV uh, today. But before it was running on a 700 megahertz. Uh, and the radio spectrum is by definition in public domain, but it is regulated. And the way how it is regulated affects how many people, how many actors have the access, how many actors uh, share these uh, resources, the radio frequency spectrum. And when we got the radio, we didn't get like a two ways radio. Like a lot of artists, a lot of activists were complaining about it, that we, with the radio technology, we didn't get like a really the two ways communication, but we got a broadcasting, like a radio station with just like a broadcast uh, information. It could be done even in the 30s, it could be done in a different way, but it didn't, didn't, uh, didn't go in that way. And there is another frequency which is interesting, it's 2.4 gigahertz, that's what I use now. And it's like it was left. Uh, without like a lot of regulation. The only regulation is that you cannot really run a very strong antenna. But if you are like a bit the small enough antenna, uh, anyone can use it from a microwave uh, oven <laughs> to, to the uh, wireless networking uh, equipment. And what we saw in that very small part of the, uh, and very small range of that radio frequency spectrum, we got a, 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 a little bit of a revolution, which, was, which happened by many actors by uh, software developers, by hackers, by corporations who, who could compete because of the standard for that. And then that's how we got like a wireless uh, uh, networking, which actually can, uh, can serve us quite well in terms of, from the perspective of the emancipation, from the perspective of how the distribution and control over that medium will be, how, how that happened, uh, who has the control. So when 700 megahertz, uh, was just uh, uh, about to happen, then of course many got excited. So what we will do with the 700 megahertz because TV is moving. And of course that it should go to telecommunications because now there is no other way, but how we will regulate it. So will we regulate it just like what we did for the, for the mobile uh, telecoms, which was disaster. From the perspective of the public interest, mobile telecoms are the biggest disaster ever. So they are keeping the control for a few decades. It's very slow. They got the monopolies in, in, in every possible way, but especially over the access to the development. So there are very few companies which are controlling the whole uh, infrastructure of the mobile telecoms. If you go and try to buy very expensive uh, telephone base stations, you will actually end up uh, with like four companies, like uh, whatever, Finland, Germany, Chinese, one, one, one uh, Chinese company. So, so, yeah, many didn't want to see 700 megahertz in the same way. And <clears throat> uh, uh, a government, uh, that, that's the case in the United States, of course didn't have a clue what to do because they don't really think in direction. They just try to negotiate, to, to be a middleman in the negotiations. And telecoms, because of huge power which they have, uh, 
In many countries, because also uh, the countries are the partially owners and also because of the taxes and, and many, so in, in, in states it's a little bit different, but still they have a, a huge uh, lobbying power. And of course they wanted to have it in the same way so that they can control it just like they used to control uh, mobile telecoms. But Google then just appeared as a, as a, as a big actor for something which completely resonates with what we would like to see. Uh, and because of the money, because of the, the, the perception in public, they, they also got like a very, uh, 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 quite some visibility. And then these negotiations ended so that state said, we'll, uh, of course we will make an auction, so uh, uh, businesses will bid to see how much they think it works. Uh, and we will basically, if we will not get five billions for one, one part of that, uh, it will be completely given to telecoms under the same regulation we had. But if we will get more than five billions, then um, then we will make it not completely open, but it's much more deregulated uh, and much more open uh, uh, than 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 the first uh, version. And then Google, for example, just got there, paid five billions, and like surprised many in the industry, like. Five billion is quite a lot of money, especially for the, at that time for, for Google. Now it's much less, but at that time it was is much bigger money. And many were surprised. They were like um, <clears throat> trying to think, oh, what 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 uh, what they will do? Because it's not really even if you have a cash, it's very hard to get into the field and uh, like especially engineering field because there is a workforce. Uh, you can't get uh, uh, the, the engineers like su super quickly. And then uh, the, the whole like uh, auction ended up so that the Verizon bought it for like a nine billions uh, at the end. And then they asked Google like, why did you do that? And I said, because we wanna keep uh, internet free and open. And I'm not trying to sell there like a PR or whatever. Uh, I, I think that we should be very suspicious, but I think it's interesting that they got into that position so that they resonated and they, they, they paid a huge amount of money. Uh, and uh, it's actually, quite hard to confront them about that. So what they really do in, in that specific uh, case, what, I mean, it's hard to, bl to blame them in the regular way, how we blame the corporations. Oh, you just go for your private interest, you exploit whatever. Uh, uh, that's, that's one of these. There, there, there are many others from like, uh, from medicine, uh, uh, investing in like, and also like in, in, in a way, what kind of infrastructure they provide for people. Because people want to use something, usually. I mean, activists want to have people more in control of their everything. But people usually need like, uh, features. And, uh, and these features they can find, uh, they can find at Google. That's what makes them, like, uh, for me, uh, the, 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 the other examples, that's what made them an like, uh, 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 example which I wanted to, to analyze. So I, I would try now to like, go uh, deeply into the, what we should know what I think, what we should know about, uh, about um, yeah, the, the digital networks, for sure, uh, in order to understand Google. So <clears throat> money, bureaucracy, and network software transform traditional time into new space and traditional space into new time. It happens all the time. So these kind of uh, abstract uh, concepts, the abstract kind of uh, uh, tools, or so like uh, abstract machinery, is able, and I'll just give you one example, then uh, I would like if you can give me some other later on, how it happens. So just one example is uh, that Google, as being a network software, transform attention time into rent of advertisement land. So attention economy is about the scarcity. So digital networks, are, uh, there is an abundance of content, of copying content. That's for sure, that there, is, there is no argument against that. Uh, it's the copying, it's super cheap, there is abundance. We can't really talk about the, any tragedy of commons or anything like that when it comes to content. But when, where, where there is a scarcity is in the, in the people's attention, like the amount of time which every individual have per day. It's like a basic uh, of, of attention, attention economy. So what, what Google does, it deals with that, it translates it into some kind of a whatever web pages, web services, uh, it makes a land in that sense because it's land through the similarity uh, of, of scarcity because it's not any more digital network which is abundant, but it's scarce. That's what it makes it, uh, uh, that time is transformed into space or at least metaphor of space. And that space, they rent. 
uh, they don't sell. They rent the advertise for advertisers. That's that's what's their business. There is nothing really more than that. Uh, 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 and also, what is so if if they do that, it's also a very old business model. That's what media does. So media sells the the land uh, to advertisers. That's how they get money. If they're not public TV. Uh, but why Google is not media? Because they don't uh, do a content production. So they actually use the, uh, the content which is produced somewhere else. So in that sense, they are basically just an advertising company with a very desirable land. And they just rent that land so you can like place your ads. And they did it in a very, uh, very interesting way. And that's the power of abstraction. So, <clears throat> so how they do that? Uh, usually people say that I also don't like that, uh, oh, Google is algorithm. Facebook will say that. That's part of the PR from Facebook, saying Google is not human. We are human, Facebook is human. Google is not human because they use algorithms. And I could hear from many where algorithm became a scary thing. You know, like, uh, so we should be scared from the algorithm. I think that that's bullshit. And uh, I'll try to, uh, to at least, like, uh, share with you what I, how I, uh, 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 how I explain what are the Google's algorithms, what they do, uh, in which way they are scary or not. So, so, so there are three of them. Um, the first one is called PageRank. I will uh, talk a little bit more later. It's about how they, uh, how they evaluate the network of web pages. So how, they, how you get the result on the search, so what is the most important one? So they do that by analyzing the network, so they find the node in the network which works more by certain criteria than the others. That's how it got uh, on top of the search results. Then there is something which is called map and reduce, uh, which was actually their take uh, on um, how to make, because when you want to analyze a data, you use a computer. So if, if your computer can, uh, you can, you can analyze the data which can be on your uh, local storage. But if that becomes like huge, and that's what we get with the internet, then we, we need to enter into something which is called distributed computation, which is order of magnitude at least more complex than doing that on a, on a single, uh, single computer. And they started and they uh, uh, um, published one article called Map and Reduce, and they explained, it's very small, they explained how they, uh, how they did it. Uh, but I, I also like, um, I like the name because I think that it explains also a lot what they do, not just through the distributed computing. They map and then they reduce a lot of things. So I, I just like the how, how it sounds. I can, I, I'll probably get a little bit more later about uh, what's, yeah. The, the very important thing about map and reduce, how they actually solve the problem of scaling. In the 1998, 1999, uh, most of the businesses uh, wanted to, to grow, to scale up, with the reliable hardware. Reliable hardware means expensive hardware. So you need to, so you, need to you trust to reliable, whatever, Oracle or IBM or something like that. So that was the business model how you scale. It was very expensive. Very few uh, business actors could scale in that, in that way because you need a lot of investment. What Google changed, and that was one of the biggest innovations which they did, is that they can scale from the buying the very, uh, uh, very cheap computers which are on the market. I will explain how that happened. And then uh, make a software which will actually treat every component in that distributed architecture as something which is very unreliable, which is just here temporary. And they succeeded in that. Without that algorithm, page rank doesn't really, doesn't, doesn't work for them uh, a lot. And then what they did, that, that, that's what I already mentioned, it's an AdWords auction. Um, uh, and AdWords, uh, <clears throat> um, what I did here. So they made auction, and it's like a spe special, like a gener uh, generalized, the second uh, uh, field bids. I, I have it here. So it's basically when you bid for the, for the ad, you say what would be the maximum amount of money with what, what you want to uh, pay. And then if you, if you offer the maximum, you will pay the second best. So you will not pay uh, your price, but you will pay the price of the second, uh, 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 like a near, nearby you. So you need to win over that one, but you will pay 
the price of, of, of that one. And then they made it distributed, and uh, also like a huge invention and huge success which they did is that they educated advertisement. They, they, they did the revolution because advertisement is full of bullshit like all the time. So there is these like myths like 50%, like 50 of amount which goes into advertisement is always wasted. But you don't know which half and things like that. And, 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 and advertisement in that sense became like an industry which is super creative and uh, are not really providing at least to the businesses, I would say not also to culture, almost any added value. And they were growing. And what Google changed in that sense that offered measurements so what you pay here is that you pay how it works for you and you get a feedback how many people clicked on that or like uh, through, through, uh, through other measurements and uh, bigger than that is that they forced people who wants to uh, buy their services to educate themselves to use their software in order to to be part of the auction so they got rid of, of all of the middlemen except them and that's what it works. Marcel, yes. can we maybe break it down a bit? To uh, make yeah. It more easier for people. So basically, you say Google works like an advertisement company, rents out ad space. Yes. And it, um, they empower the users on the other side. Yes. Yes. And they do all this through page ranks, through the mapping. So the how they? Yeah. One. So they use page rank in order to be the best, uh, the best search engine. So users go to Google because they expect the best uh, search results there. And uh, they use that algorithm uh, which proved itself that uh, you don't need to know a lot about the content. You need to understand it semantically. You don't need to do a lot of artificial intelligence. You just need to know about the network. And network is like a, 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 a is, is network because of links in between web pages. And I, I will explain that uh, uh, like in a few minutes. Maybe, maybe we skip the precedence. Hmm? I think we're a bit late with the time. Maybe we skip the precedence, you say. I think oh, that's I, I, the I next had like point. 40 minutes and now it's 25. 26. Okay, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe focus on, on one point. Or okay, I mean, this is half of the... Yeah. And the discussion would be good. I want to get into discussion of... Okay. I mean, I'm fine with the discussion. I just think that there are like few basic. Can no, I, I find it all very interesting? Yeah. Please, please go. Okay, so they they were building up or like how how that happened. So personal computers were one of the incidents which happened in the computer industry. Uh, so the, the until like uh, early 70s, we didn't have like the, the all of the computers were huge. It was like uh, expensive, and very few people had access to computers. And just like in the late 60s, more than one person at the time could. Uh, use one huge expensive computer. And then it, uh, personal computers happened as a revolution, like uh, small businesses, but also a lot of counterculture, uh, uh, like uh, Steve Jobs, a lot of hippies from California made it uh, 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 like uh, exciting and whatever. We can think a lot, uh, we can criticize a lot these Californian fantasies, but they brought to the world a personal computer. And then the huge investment happened. So almost every indi individual in the world invested in a computer. And then through internet, through internet that became a network of, of computers. That uh, lowered down the prices of the, of, 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 the, of the components. That's why they could do that in 1998. Uh, they could say we want to go with the cheap computers, not with the... And I think that a very important part of that is free software, which happened in 1984, where people started to build a huge infrastructure which is common based peer production, what your high banker calls. And that's like, there is no authorship. There is no ownership over that code. And they built, I did the, uh, uh, like a part of my research was mapping how big is that. Uh, I will just tell you, it's like a 30% in terms of a workforce, labor force investment uh, uh, was actually on top of, uh, of, of, of free software. So I have a methodology, it's like a rather complicated, but that's my claim. So at least 70% of that was already there, and they built on top of that. So, yeah. so, so Google used free software or uses free software? Uh, all, of the, all of these companies are using free software hugely. So, so at least like 70% uh, of their infrastructure is free software. It starts with a Linux kernel or BSD kernel, but much, much uh, uh, smaller. And then it goes with all of the tools from programming languages, compilers, and, and, and others. And the sys, like a system tools. 
So Amazon built a huge empire on top of the common-based peer production, on top of free software. Google did the same. Facebook is doing the same. So, so this is what is interesting for public, because these were not financed, at least in the first phase, by any public money. That was a gift from like a visionary people, revolutionary people like Richard Stallman, Linus Torvalds, and many others. And then businesses could build on top of that. But what is problematic is that even we have insight that the common base peer production, that sharing is actually making the huge amount of, the, of these infrastructures, we still don't recognize that uh, as something where society should invest. So there are so many consequences of that insights which are not happening. So we don't have access not just to these infrastructures, we don't have access to knowledge, like to books, for example. There are like so many books, we need to go through the piracy, so we are all criminals in order to get that. When we want to make uh, like, a pharma, like a medicine, it's the same through the patent laws. So, so I think that these are the consequences of not recognizing what happened uh, in, in this context. And I think that internet, uh, that was also said before, is making most of these like, uh, changes of paradigm quite obvious. So, so that <clears throat> means that the internet giants are built on open source, basically? Of free software. Yes, uh, yeah. it's yes, yeah. claim and then it's for, it's also quite well known. I mean, like uh, Apache web server, all of the web browsers, uh, uh, mail servers. Uh, uh, it's like a, a routers. Like uh, most of the routers are running uh, uh, Linux and some like derivations of Linux. So in that sense, what is not visible, it's free software. And then like the latest trends, uh, I will just like do an off kind of uh, observation. Latest trends with, uh, with startups is actually that uh, it's like a 95% of what is there is free software. Then they do rounded corners and like a nice colors and that becomes startup and then it just like goes for that like a gambling to be one in like 100,000 of projects which will be bought by Facebook, Google. So they do a lot of, uh, of that kind of... Uh, I, have a, so did, yeah. I, have a, I have a question. Is it okay? Can we can we open the floor? Yes, um, I so have more like attractive visuals, but okay. yeah. attractive. Sorry, um, Next time. attractive visuals. Wow. Yeah. Um, so just but one question. I I say. <laughs> so uh, just one question. Um, so you say um, okay. Just to make it simple, um, we we have we have something that we could say belongs to the to the commons that is free software, and those uh, who start companies are are taking this using this. Um, well, and making uh, a, a private, uh, yeah, well... Uh, I'm not trying to make that claim like, oh, they are parasites, uh, you know, like uh, to blame no, any no, of them. Yeah. It's a structural thing, okay. it's a capitalism. Okay, but, but then, okay, something private comes out of this, turns, uh, you know, out of this. So my question is, um, is there, do you see, um, because I think you, you've pointed uh, in, in a variety of ways to, to this direction, is there a, a return kind of in, into the into the commons domain, into the public domain from this? You know, it comes from the commons, it goes into you know, uh, it turns into a private course, property, and then what is? How does it so exactly these look? measurements? It, it's mm. really like a, how do you how do you want to see that? So there are a mm. lot of like a si simple small gestures where, for example, Linux kernel in last like uh, seven years was developed by more than six thousand people. And most of them, like at least 80 or 90 percent, are employed by companies. So there are more than 600 companies which are working together collaboratively on a very, the most important part of that infrastructure, and that's a kernel. A, a kernel. So in that sense, it goes back, but it doesn't go back through infrastructures. It goes back through components. And these infrastructures, which are very important now, are still in private hands. And that, that used to be the case in the US before. So for example, electrical distribution was developed only in US through the market logic because Edison was starting that and blah, blah, blah. In all other countries, even in United Kingdom, that very, very important infrastructure was actually the, like a huge government uh, 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 investment. So in that sense, what we are witnessing is now, what, uh, what we are witnessing now is that yes, there was a, uh, uh, like uh, market logic which gave it to us. But these infrastructures are now globals and they are completely in the, in the hands of the most, uh, like the, the strongest uh, uh, economy 
in the world. And that's what I, what I would say is the, is the main, uh, if I would say, main critique. So there is nothing really, uh, in that sense, if you, if you would list all of the corporations ever, Google is not really like top on top of the list of the evil companies. Like evil companies are the ones like a Goldman Sachs and, and people who are cheating, like ruining the whole uh, economy, then being bailed out or whatever. These are the evil companies. But uh, the IT companies, very rarely. And we most of the time actually talk about these IT companies as like the biggest evils because we use our computers so much that that's what we face and that's what we would like to change. But I don't see I don't see that these like a simple like a directions like a privacy is really enough to change any of that. It's just that we waste time basically uh, 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 trying to come up with something super small where the problem is structural, and that's what I'm trying uh, to show here. That uh, 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 yeah, that that's that's I mean what happened or what happened or what's happening. I mean, what I find also interesting uh, when you said like uh, Google has this business model that they use the free software and all the startups are doing it the same. So isn't that a good uh, development? No, of course. I mean, uh, I, I got a lot of drivers for my computer because the companies got onto the, onto the train. So they are like a small kind of parts of that. And also the businesses recognize the power of co collaboration. But power of collaboration was recognized so many times. Every nation collaborates in the war against other nations. So it's not, that's another one where the, like, oh, they started to collaborate. Of course. I mean, that's, that, that, that's what always happens. But it's really like, a, what's the principle behind that and what are the consequences of certain collaborations? Because if like five evil guys starts to collaborate, you know, it's, it's not necessarily that uh, it's a good thing. Their collaboration will probably just be like a olig oligopoly on the market. Or if it, when it comes to military or whatever else, they will just start to like uh, molest the others, by, by, driven by the power of collaboration. Do you have questions? Uh, you wrote on your presentation that uh, Google gave money to uh, Linux projects and to um, Firefox. And I think they, um, this money makes the quite a big part of the Mozilla BG. Yes. You think there's a danger that um, this uncommercial world of Wikimedia and Mozilla could become economically dependent on Google? I mean, yes. Uh, I, think I, they I still trust, I st I, 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 in that sense, I still trust Mozilla Foundation. I don't think that they lost a lot because of the Google. Uh, also, Google needs to, because Google wants to be like a good citizen of that world. Even they have uh, a Chromium and Chrome, they still pay because they probably like, uh, I think that they have like two like uh, tracks. One is that they feel uh, brave enough. They're also like a very narcissistic. The case with China was very, very simple about it. They thought that they are so huge. They are not that huge, but they feel that they can really like uh, uh, spend a lot of money in order to make web, uh, web or internet more open. They bought like for 150 millions, they bought like a, a video codec. They started the fight in the field, which is very important. And again, they are like a corporate actor, try, uh, like uh, resonating with the public interest. But at the end, we will see if that completely resonates with the public interest. I, I don't think that, uh, that these infrastructures and that, that what we are talking about can really lead uh, uh, in the long term, can lead into the... No. Uh, yeah. I, okay. Your question was, do I okay, think that uh, Mozilla I, I, should uh, 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 like uh, re reject the money? I have from, to repeat it. Uh, yeah. okay. Do you think uh, Mozilla and so on should stop taking money from Google? I don't like saying what people should do. Yeah. So you just said uh, Godzilla, uh, no, Google Godzilla. resonates with public interest. Okay. So Google, Google yeah. resonates with the public interest, so they empower the users. No, 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 I wouldn't say that general statement. I don't think that Google resonates with public interest. I think that Google in different fields, yes. especially in the fields where Google is revolutionary or like are competing with other businesses, it actually solves, optimize. That's what engineering, what digital networks with engineering does. It gets into the field, which was not optimized, and then it optimizes. And if the actors in that field are not adapted to that, then they will be wiped out. The problem is that the only actors who are doing, who are changing these fields, who are in that sense revolutionary in these fields, are corporations. And 
you uh, like American corporations. Where I, I just to be clear, I love America. So I, I'm not like trying to claim. Uh, 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 but I love Germany. I love like. But I would like to to say like I love them. That's that's my point in, in that. So it's not about. It's just about the asymmetry of power, uh, 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 which in the long term is is not really good. Yeah, but that means um, they care for the users' needs. They empower the users because they they find a market advantage, so to speak, okay. and they become very big in that field because. It's the big every I mean like, like a, if you just if you if you just say Google, Amazon and Apple, there is almost no one in the world who's not affected by their businesses. So Amazon actually took like a, made a huge infrastructure of renting the computer power. They are distributed. Uh, so anyone who wants to do anything big on internet will probably go there. It, if if it, if they will not go to Amazon as a, as a corporation. They will go into that paradigm, which is mostly driven, the development of that paradigm is mostly driven by Amazon and others are catching up. So in that sense, Amazon is controlling that, if not by the bank account, by the access to develop, development. They made uh, one like same day delivery just recently for, for, for US. So that means that every retail store in US is actually affected by that. Whoever sells anything, in any physical space is affected by the deliverance in the same day. No one ever, it's like a, it's a huge achievement in terms of the, it's not just software, it's like a huge organizational achievement. That's what Amazon did. Uh, Google is like doing, uh, in any intellectual labor, there is no one now who actually is not affected because Google is controlling that infrastructure. And when it comes to the desire market of the devices, that's Apple. So whenever we are like, uh, we want to whatever, feel creative, then we will actually depend on the Apple's uh, access to the development through iPad, through, and, and you can see that in every, every possible industry, they are completely scared at least by one of these three. And yeah, that's, that's why I think that we should, we should analyze the latest state of capitalism because it's it's important. So I, I think that it's important to go with uh, small projects to see how they can actually compete. But uh, I think that it's also equally important to go from top to analyze what's what's going on at the top. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a comprehensive question. Um, you said that one of the basic principles of those big companies is an inversion of time-space relations. So you were basically saying that they transform uh, traditional time into new space and the other way around. Uh, could you specify that a little bit? Because I can follow you on that. In my view, what I could understand is that they, they turn traditional time into new time and traditional space into new space. But uh, I, I, can't, I can't follow you on uh, how you can transform time into space and the other way around. Could you could you explain it a little bit more, please? Yeah. So 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 there is like a, I will try to make like economic. I think that that is important. So so the the main argument for for capitalism uh, against communism is that there is something which is called tragedy of commons. So if you just let the land to everybody, then they they will not care about it, and then they will ruin the resources because that's the scarce resource. Because uh, when the the resource is uh, uh, scarce and non uh, and, and 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 when there is like a competition over that, if if someone uses it, someone else ca cannot use it. Then the capitalist uh, ideology will say we should privatize that, and that proved in many many areas. Uh, uh, and that's a very strong argument. If you go against that argument and say like no, I I, I can envision a society where we don't need that, you will be probably like a marginalized, because that's a very strong argument. And then uh, when it when it came to something more abstract in that sense, uh, when it came to digital networks, then most of the powerful actors and like a ruling class, but not this ruling class, but whatever, like uh, the world physical plus abstraction, they started to use the metaphor of that over the something which is not a physical space and which is also not scarce. And what I said is that what's, uh, what, is, what is not scarce on internet is like a copy data, but there is a scarcity when it comes to internet and that's time. So that time is attention. And then uh, uh, that time is what Google 
like uh, transformed back to the tragedy of commons. They privatize that. They use it just as a land. They use like if you want to then criticize, you should go with Marx and uh, read the critique of the rent and the land rent and I mean yeah. And so so that that's how that transformation uh, happens. So it's it's very it's it's abstract abstract world. We need to use metaphors. There is no like a I'm not a uh, like a, um, how to say like a, into quantum physics or like a, how how do you call it? like a second law of the thermodynamics or something like that. I, I don't understand that. I can use it metaphorically and I will fail. But uh, I, I think that this, that's how it goes. It goes through the metaphors and then we use the wrong metaphors on the wrong places. And that's where I think uh, the problems start. Because I, I don't, I th that's why I think that we should really think about the, 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 that whole new, par new change and new paradigm when it comes to digital networks not through these corporations, but to actually attack the very argument of the tragedy of commons. And then we can try to start, and that's how we can uh, compete and how we can fight Google. Because if you just go for the Google, we didn't do anything. So, I mean, in that sense, I propose, let's share books, let's share music, let's share knowledge uh, as, as illegal activity. Uh, but like that's just like that a lifestyle you. choice. We, I mean, if it, if, it, if it doesn't get into the politics, into the change of the paradigm, which is based on the tragedy of commons or, or, or many others, like, but that's kind of the very re recognizable, we did nothing. <clears throat> but Google is scanning books for you already. Not for me, that's the first for, thing, for but everybody. I'm happy if anyone scanned the books because I know that there are enough of people inside of, inside of Google, inside of Facebook, we will get these books. So that's, that's why I'm happy if anyone is digitizing books. But I would be much happier if the public libraries started that before Google and if they were more efficient in doing that. And if they actually just continue with the idea of a public library, where it's fucking great that everyone on internet can access everything which was ever written. And that's what, why we had a public library. And public library in that sense is not like, a, it's not invented by Lenin, not the, by Kardel or whoever. Pub, public library is like accepted everywhere in the world. It's very, in a way, it's a very American, like a Melville Dewey and, and, and other people. So in that sense, we ruined the, the great dream of, of, of which was quite uh, well accepted. Uh, that's why, why I'm happy when they, do, when they do that, but I'd be much happier if, yeah, if someone else or mm -hmm. we do that. Yes, we have a... um, It's actually two questions. Um, the one thing, as you know, is uh, I, I completely agree with, with the approach to kind of a very simple step, completely actually. What? What? Com completely what? Agree. Ah, okay. with, with a very simple kind of procedure to bring back political economy to, to look at those big companies and the changes in infrastructure. So I think it's kind of an actually an ABC thing to say Google and its rise is related to the policies of privatization of infrastructures in the West and things like that. And I think that's very important uh, because it's often forgotten and often kind of people just... Uh, argue with this claim uh, of Google saying we are the good ones, kind of opposing it with no, you are bad, actually. And it kind of, these, these things get lost. But then there are two questions, and one actually uh, we, we already discussed once. I, I think one question is, at, at what point do, do these successful new businesses and structures, when they get so big and so dominant, actually change in their critical value for, for the whole system? Like, uh, what happens when, when the U.S. government suddenly uh, sees the, the importance of, of Google and places uh, security administration people in there? What happens when Google gets so dominant that they actually see the potential that they can be a leading force in styling ways of experiencing the world, shaping cultures of mobility and all that. So then, then I think the story has to change at some point. The, the second question is, uh, I think some irritation which, which you bring to the table, some positive irritation, is about the open question, what does it mean in terms of policy? If, if you say it's not a technical problem and 
that's what engineers do and it's political economy, then still the question remains, what do we do with you uh, kind of restating the truth and applying it to Google that infrastructures are getting privatized on a global scale and kind of get transnationalized. So what should be the, the, the uh, approach to that if, if we wanna um, kind of achieve these open communicative uh, structures? Yeah, uh, I will start with the, with the second one. Like what should be approach? That's what you said? That's what, what your question was? Okay, can you repeat just the very last uh, sen like very last sentence of your question? Like, what would be your approach after having brought the question to political economy and kind of uh, characterizing the very uh, ambivalent picture of Google? What is kind of what is a critical politics looking like after after, after stating that? I mean, the critical politics. Um, I, I don't think that we are ready in that sense. Even if we like uh, start to change, that we are like immediately ready to uh, to get into the like whatever perfect state or like uh, the the great uh, redistribution of power. I mean that there are like so many things. Even if we start with the with the communism today, we'll we will reach quite a lot of problems. But I think that at least we will start from a better ground than what we have here. So in that sense, I would like to see revolution. Meanwhile, I do whatever residencies in like uh, Germany. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, so critical politics would be uh, like how we can come up with, um, <clears throat> with something where we can, to which we can trust. And I think that we can call that institutions. So we have different institutions. We have one of the institution is like a state, a government. And I, I, I'm, I'm in that sense, my personal approach is not let's ruin the governments. That's where I don't agree with uh, Americans, libertarian Americans at all. I don't think that uh, that, that, can, uh, that can resolve any problem. What I can see is that the, the results of these attempts of that individual autonomy are some of the great softwares like Bitcoin, for example, which will ne never change the world. But they are actually, because of that kind of passion, they can really come up with some auto uh, with uh, technologies of autonomy, which can really empower the individuals, which can be used. But I don't think that we need, when we have the technology of, the, of, of, of empowering like individuals, I don't think that we immediately need to go into the world where individualism is the, is the, is the dominant uh, ideology. So I think that it's really about like uh, how to come up with, uh, with their technologies in a way, like uh, that kind of underground US libertarian technologies. But let's keep the trust which we, and the order in that sense. I, I know that it, 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 it sounds like quite reactionary, but I think that there are like good things about, uh, about the order which government uh, gives to us. And, and if, it, if it's like driven by the uh, usual suspects, the values, equality and, and, and things like that, then I think that that's the balance, that's the critical politic. Because uh, if we go and stick with the, keeping the institutions and not realizing that the mega structures, like these kind of mega structures, which does a lot of negotiations, that's the problem. It's never that efficient like a business because in business, you can actually start with the negotiation and say, fuck you, we will now do this. And then if you fail, someone else will succeed. And, but, but in a way, like uh, the, 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 the government is very important. We cannot run the society through that kind of uh, 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 like efficiency as a value. And the other thing which you, which you asked was about, I remember- Political my, power of Google. Yes, I don't think that they have a lot of political power. That's, that's another one. So I don't think that they will like uh, immediately, I, I, I just don't buy the argument that Facebook is already like, uh, I don't know, like uh, hugely working with CIA and that like that they are like that the, they're social networks of like uh, really bad guys like in James James Bond movies. I I, I just don't I, I I don't believe in that. Also, I don't believe that they have that power, but I don't think that maybe in in Facebook, maybe Facebook is not the good enough surveillance machine. That's also what I would say. So if I would be the head of CIA or something, may yeah. I don't want to help my eye. I'm a completely margin. So I wouldn't go that way. So I, 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 I don't think that uh, it's maybe in a, in, a, in a short term because uh, I think that Facebook is, is, is losing a lot of, of, of their power if people just see it not as a privacy platform. So if, if you go to Facebook and never do anything which, uh, which, which you are ashamed you know, of, something like that. 
if you just use it as a replacement for media. It can be quite nice uh, 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 replacement for TV, for example, or for newspapers, or for whatever. It's, but the problem is that if people really go with something which can be used against them on Facebook. So I think that just the, by, by the way how you use it, it's like a, it basically it, it ruins quite some dream from CIA that that will be the best surveillance machine. Then then should come up with something better than... Uh, and then also there is another one can, where... Can we maybe get back to Google, please? And okay. we, we have one more question. So. I, I just wanted to say, because I, 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 I touched one important to me, I think that what we need are the technology. We, we need to claim that we should have access to encryption. That's the first thing. So that should be default. So that it's not default that you go without encryption somewhere, but you just start with, the, with the raising the security. That's what I would like to see. And then you will decide if your action is like private, public, semi-public, or whatever. Because then you trust to something which also the bad guys are trusting. Because when it comes to communication, we trust to mathematics. And uh, then we have a fight over mathematics, not over, and also about the resources um, a computer power. So they can go like, uh, if they go with uh, billions into the computer power, we can just like make our keys, private keys in encryption longer. Okay, next question, please. Um, thanks for your, uh, for your lot of opinions. Um, I want to go back a little bit to the, um, to the open, open, free and open source and the analogy you created between technology and content on the internet. And you say books should be freely available and we should have all that content. Um, but then you draw an analogy between the software developers and book creators, so writers, uh, painters, artists. Um, what kind of advice or tips would you have for the publishers in this room uh, to help the mindset of those creators to think more as a uh, 1984 software developer, because they change their minds into... Yeah, I would say away. that don't go, don't, don't, don't argue, don't support the market logic when the free market will not uh, justify your business model, if you talk economy. So uh, if you are like, a, at this moment, uh, if you want to do business, and if you like...